name is Shelly. Welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you all are with me today. Today's video is going to be my May mid-month wrap-up video. I had a really great reading month. I ended up reading, I believe, 26 books in the month of May. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that is the most that I've read in a month so far this year. So I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, I read a lot of great romances this uh, month. And yeah, so we're just gonna get right into it. So the first book that I read in the end half of May is gonna be Brutal Vows by JT Geisinger. This is the fourth book in the Queens and Monsters series. I think this might be the last book of the series. This is her newest release. This just came out like a month or two ago. Um, I read this because I was still kind of in a mafia mood and I wanted to finish the series that I had started in the mafia romance readathon that happened in the beginning of the month. So this book is about Spider who was a side character in a couple of the other books of this series. Um, he is kind of the second hand guy to the uh, head of the Irish mafia. Um, He's been really great in the other books, so I was really excited to read this one to find, you know, read more of his story and get his HEA. So the Irish Mafia are kind of sort of making a deal with the Cosa, Cosa Nostra, if I'm saying that correctly, and trying to kind of form like an alliance with them. And in order to do so, they are need somebody to like get married kind of an arranged uh -oh. marriage type of thing so spider kind of volunteers and he is going to get married to the daughter of the dawn of the cosa nostra um but her aunt does not like this plan um she is the sister of the dawn uh, she is kind of known as the black widow because she there's like rumors that she killed her husband um because he had been abusing her although i don't know too much i don't know that like a bunch like other people outside of them knew necessarily that he was abusing her but he was so anyway, so she is not a fan of this plan um, because of her past with marriage and she is afraid that Spider is going to be like her husband towards her niece and so she's very protective of her niece and she doesn't really want this plan to take place um, and she wants to make sure either try to stop it or you know ensure that Spider is not like her dead husband and in doing so she gets to kind of know spider a little bit better and spider and her and her name is reyna um they start to fall in love and form a relationship um i really love this i gave this four and a half stars um this is pretty on par for like the rest of this book the books in this series with the queens and monsters series where we have like a super like alpha male um takes charge but then we also have our heroine who can stand up for herself and doesn't take his crap and she can like really like hold her own against him there is like a scene in this book where like he's like super impressed with her because there are some like intruders in the house and she just like takes charge and she like yeah I think she ends up like I don't think she has a gun I don't know somehow she got a hold of like a gun and is like shooting these people and it just like it doesn't phase her she's just like she's got it so it's like I just absolutely love that. I love strong heroines in my stories. Um, the steam on this was very high, which I really enjoy. This is like a hate to love kind of story because the two of them do not like each other at the beginning. And there's also some breeding kink in this. Um, there are trigger warnings for past trauma. So like I said, the heroine Raina, she was abused by her husband in the past and she did actually kill her husband. Um, and then there is some death of family members in this story in the past. So, um, but yeah, so I really enjoyed this one. Next, we have The Wild Air by Karina Halley. This is the second book in her Nordic Royal series. 
I ended up reading like this entire series out of order. I read the first of the series and the fourth or no the third of this series like a couple full of years ago I think and I really wanted to try to finish out this series so I picked this one and then um the other book of the series which was going to come up here in a little bit um so like I said this is the second book of the series um this is about a prince of one of the Nordic countries I can't remember which one and he is known as like the wild prince the wild heir um he is a playboy he is kind of like an adrenaline junkie he's always wanting to do like the next biggest thing and he ends up getting caught well there's kind of like a scandal because he ends up sleeping with the prime minister's daughter and she makes a sex tape out of it and leaks it everywhere and so to help with this scandal that has happened he must get married and kind of settle down and prove that he's not as wild as he is known for being um so his mother kind of finds like a bunch of potential candidates to become his wife they're all just like members of royalty of like other countries and he picks this girl who is a princess of this like super duper tiny country and she is not super used to being like in the royalty like spotlight and whatnot because when she was really young she got sent away to like boarding school in England and she's just continued to stay there and she's going to college there. So she is not the biggest fan of this arranged marriage situation also because of the rumors that she has heard about him. Um, so she's not too sure how this is going to work out and she's also afraid that she's going to end up falling for him and that he is going to break her heart. And she's also wanting to try to continue her college career and finish out her degree. So I really enjoyed this one. I give this one four stars. The steam on this was really high. Um, there are trigger warnings for an ill family member. But yeah, I really enjoyed their banter together. I liked that our heroine was like a more like studious kind of character, um, which his family kind of appreciate. And he also thought that was really cool. And I don't know, it was just, it was very enjoyable. Then I thought I would try out another monster romance. So I read Treasure of the Abyss by Tiffany Roberts. I believe this is the first in a series. This is a sci-fi romance. Um, this, I don't even know if this is our world or like a different world set in the future, something. Um, but this is about our heroine and she is out on a boat with a friend and I don't even remember what exactly what they were doing but it ends up capsizing and she gets res rescued by this kraken type creature um and it's turn ends up being like their romance. I listened to this one on audiobook and I was kind of bored throughout most of this uh, so I ended up giving this three and a half stars. It wasn't terrible I I did kind of like their take on like the whole Kraken kind of thing because it was more like science fiction based um, because these people are more like humanoid but they just have like tentacles and there's a bit where you kind of find out that they were kind of like experiments from like the human race was like their origins. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, I did like the um, relationship between our hero and our heroine. It did also have like a almost like a forbidden love kind of aspect to it. Uh, there's a lot of prejudice from both of their people against each other. Um, a lot of his people like the Krakens are terrified of her and think that she's going to end up like killing their people. So there was some of that in it too. Um, there's also trigger warnings for um, death of a family member like in the past it doesn't actually happen like on on page and I would say the steam on this would be about medium to high steam. 
Then I read The Royal Rogue by Karina Halley. So this is the fourth book of the Nordic Royal series. Um, this is about the princess of Sweden and she ends up having kind of like a extended one night stand with the Prince of Monaco. Um, so our heroine, she is a divorcee. Um, she is a single mother. So she doesn't necessarily want a relationship, but the two of them are very attracted to, to each other. So like I said, they kind of have a one night stand that kind of extends out like a few days before he ends up like going back home because he is in Sweden like visiting them. Oh, and this also contains a surprise pregnancy trope because after the one night stand, she does end up pregnant, but they have issues like there's conflict with them like getting together and being together because he had promised um this like russian tennis player that he would help protect her because he is kind of her beard um because she is gay and is in a relationship with a woman but they are much stricter in Russia about those types of things. So if they anybody found out, she would basically like lose all of her sponsorships and she would not be able to do what she wants to do. Um, and she would basically be ostracized by her family. So he made a promise to her that he was going to eventually end up marrying her to keep her safe. So of course that has some tension because he is falling in love with our princess and she is going to be having his baby so um they have some things to kind of work out through that uh so i gave this four stars i really enjoyed this one i really like like all the tropes that were in this i the single mom um these characters are in their 30s i believe um and i also like really enjoy like the whole surprise pregnancy trope too um there aren't really a ton of trigger warnings in this one just like i said um a little bit about like the russian star that she might be ostracized because she is gay um and the steam on this is high then I read Big Ben by Nana Malone, and this is the exclusive cover that I got in maybe like the Bell book box a while ago, maybe. Um, this I read because I thought this was going to be a royal romance, and it wasn't. This is about Ben, and he is like in this secret society um and him and his friends are wanting to take down this secret society because this secret society killed their friend and he is kind of undercover and trying to get this information at this party and he's about to get caught and he ends up getting um, kind of trapped in a closet with our heroine of this story and he kind of lets this like information that he got on the flash drive just kind of like a slip in her purse so it can like he doesn't get it taken away from him and end up being accidentally caught with it um, and then she ends up also working at the same place that he works at or that he like this business that he owns and they start to kind of form a relationship in this if you can't really tell this was not my favorite this was I ended up giving us two stars I thought this story was very confusing and it was hard to follow especially all the stuff about like the secret society and their motivation like the espionage kind of stuff I just went over my head and I couldn't follow it um and honestly I just really didn't care about these two characters either and I don't know well I wanted to read this because I haven't read a Nana Malone book before 
I want to try her again and I know she does have some royalty romance which like I said I thought this is this was a royalty romance so I may try one of her actual like royal romances and see if I like those any better but I really do not plan on continuing this series um there are like three books in this series and then she's got like like other series that tie into this one about like the rest of his friends um but like I said I'm kind of like mm, I did not care for this at all um there are trigger warnings for death of a loved one and the steam on this was like medium um I think that the characters do end up having sex together but yeah this was just eh, I didn't care for this then I read Forget Me Not by QB Tyler and again this I believe is the exclusive cover that I got in like Bell Book Box or something. I picked this one up because I was wanting to try to read a QB Tyler book in support of her because um, if you're not aware she posted this month that her husband um, they had just celebrated their one year anniversary and he unexpectedly passed away. Um, so like the book community was trying to, um, like buy some of her books and read her books to kind of support her. So I ended up picking this one up because I heard this is an amnesia romance and this is like a marriage in trouble slash second chance romance. Um, and I heard good things, so I decided to pick this up. So like I said, this is about um, our heroine, and she gets a call one day that her estranged husband has been in a really bad car accident, and he is in a coma, and then he ends up waking up, but he does not remember the past, like, two or three years. Um, and in those years, their marriage kind of went down the tank, and he cheated on her, and she went through the process to try to get them a divorce. And I can't really remember if they did actually get a divorce or it wasn't quite there yet. I'm not really sure. So he is wanting to try to find out what happened and try to get them back together and um, kind of revitalize their marriage and try to stay together. Um, I gave this three and a half stars, unfortunately. I, I am finding that I unfortunately I'm not the biggest fan of QB Tyler's works. Um, this is the third book that I've read by her and I feel like all of her books have elements that I should love. She writes like some taboo type stories and they she just has certain things in her books that I just really do not like that end up making me bump down my star rating of her books. Um, so like this story, I was very irritated with our hero's best friend who was like a doctor and was taking care of him in the hospital and trying to explain to our heroine kind of things that were going on. And he was like kind of blaming her for their problems that they were having in their marriage and like saying that you know you're the one that caused him to cheat which I'm not okay with like even if she had some things going on that caused her not to like work on their relationship she is not the cause of him cheating on her um, there are trigger warnings, like I said, for cheating. Um, and then you do find out that she had some miscarriages, which started the whole spiral of their marriage kind of going south. Um, so that's where I also had some issues because, um, some of their problems were that in her grieving process, she wasn't kind of like being attentive towards him and being there for him which pissed me off to no end because she should be able to grieve however the hell she wants to grieve and I don't really I didn't really care for that in this whole book about that being placed on her so yeah I like I said I 
gave it three and a half stars and I feel like I'm pretty generous giving it three and a half stars. Um, the steam on this was pretty high too. Oh, and another thing I almost, I for, almost forgot about this. So he ends up remembering at one point in this story, he start he remembers everything and he decides to just keep this a secret because they're kind of starting to get back together and he doesn't want her to know that it that he remembers because if she knows then they'll probably not be together again so that also pissed me off to no end that he was keeping that a secret from her so I don't know the more that I talk about this book the more I want to like draw my reading a, a lot more than what I have it at because I just had so many issues with this story um, then I decided to pick up another monster romance. I was kind of like in an, just an M type mood. <laughs> so like mafia, monster, I ended up reading a couple, a couple MC romances. It was just like an M type month for May. Um, but yeah, so I picked up Thieves and Monsters, um, by Opal Fairchild and Cleo Evans. This was a brand new release from both of them. And this is a paranormal rom romance. Um, it kind of has like a little bit of like mythology mixed into it. Um, and this is also sort of mafia. It's called mafia, but that wasn't that was like a really small part of this um this is about our heroine who is tasked with stealing a painting from our three heroes and our three heroes make up like the Cer cerberus uh beast um so they can all like shape shift and they've got all these like powers so they catch her in the act of trying to steal from them and they make a deal with her that she is going to stay with them for a week and they get to do literally whatever they want with her mm -hmm. and after that week then they will let her go um i give this three stars this was fine um, my biggest issues with this was that I just feel like there wasn't enough story in this. I like really wanted a lot more from it. And this was very insta love, which seems on par. This is my second Cleo Evans book, which seems on par for her. Um, not that like the writing is bad. The writing was really good and the sex scenes were pretty steamy. Um, this was high steam and there were some male male action in it. I just, like I said, I wanted a lot more from this and I'm not the biggest fan of like insta love. <laughs> Then I picked up This Love Hurts by Willow Winters. I picked this one up because I've been wanting to try out Willow Winters and read one of her books. Um, this was about our heroine and she is a lawyer and she is working with this like FBI agent um, to kind sort of take down the serial killer that has like become obsessed with her. I listened to this on audiobook. I don't know if that was the best way to like absorb this. I gave this two stars. I really did not care for this. Um, I think this was trying to be like a like romantic suspense, romantic thriller, and I was just didn't really get that. I didn't really care about these characters. Um, and this I also didn't really care because this just didn't really feel like it was a full standalone book. It needed more to it, which I'm pretty sure is like the rest of the series because the, this is the first in a the series. There is like little to no steam in this. I Like I said, I just, I really didn't care about this whatsoever. Um, I may try out another Willow Winters book eventually, but I honestly wasn't that impressed with this one. Then I read Heat Wave by Karina Halley. Um, this is like a standalone book by her. This is about our heroine who lost her job because um, she was working for like her boyfriend or fiance, I believe, and something happened and they end up breaking up and she got fired from him. So she is going to um, Hawaii 
because her dead sister's fiance or husband has a job opening for a chef at his hotel that he owns and so she goes there and they end up having a relationship and a romance um i gave this three stars i the beginning like half of this book i was really enjoying i love the kind of taboo aspect of this story because this was the husband of her now dead sister um and she has been wanting him since her sister and him got together it kind of has that like it's always been you type trope to it but my issues with this was that it does contain a third act breakup which is a really big pet peeve of mine especially in this one because I feel like it was very unnecessary um because she kind of gets like threatened to um and like um blackmailed into breaking up with him when if she was honest with him and just told him what ha was going on they could have solved everything and would have been fine and we wouldn't have had them breaking up and then there's a big time jump too which also annoys me after having these like third act conflicts where they break up so there was that also i was very irritated with our hero in this because like i said it does have that it's always been you trope and you kind of find out that he has always been into her but for whatever reason he just got dazzled by her sister ended up marrying her and their marriage ended up like sucking which pissed me off because i was like if you've been <laughs> in love with her why the hell did you start to date her sister ended up be you know getting married to her so that was just ridiculous um there is trigger warnings for death of family members since she dies and they do end up going to i think she was in like a car accident and went off like a cliff or something so they do end up going to like the spot where she died um and then there's also cheating in this not present on page cheating but like in the past um, and this is high steam, so there's that. And then I read Darkness Embraced by Tilly Cole. This is the seventh book of the Hades Hangman series. Um, this one is about Tanner, who was an ex Nazi and ex KKK member. And he is kind of reforming his old ways because he fell in love with the um, daughter of the Don of the cartel in Mexico, which, you know, with the KKK, she's not white. That's a big no, no, but he fell in love with her. Um, and they are going to, um, the cartel and them are kind of in a war. So the, they are going to try to kidnap this girl who they are told is, her cousin and is supposed to be getting married and they're going to kidnap her to try to help out with this war kind of thing or whatever um and ends up being it was her that they end up kidnapping i gave this four stars i enjoyed this um i wasn't as invested with these two characters as i have been with the rest of this the books of this series but it was still very enjoyable um it did have a little bit of that like romeo and juliet type aspect like scenario to it um because like their families are like brutal like enemies um there are trigger warnings for lots and lots of racism in this um there is violence and death um and I would say the steam on this is going to be more like medium to high steam then I read A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I read this for the um, Sarah J. Massathon that is going on throughout the year, um, where a bunch of booktubers and people are getting together to just read all of Sarah J. Mass's whole backlist. Um, so the next book to read was this one. This is about Feyre and she is kind of the breadwinner of her family. She goes out and hunts and she basically takes care of her family 
And one day she's out hunting and she comes across a wolf, but he's kind of like a weird mysterious type wolf. And she ends up killing this wolf. Um, and lo and behold, this wolf was actually a fae that she killed. And this goes against this treaty that the humans and the fae created. Um, so he is wanting right to, uh, so there is a fey person that comes to take her because he is wanting retribution for, um, her killing this fey member of his court. So she gets taken to his court, um, and lots of other things ensue from there. So this is a five star read for me. This is like the fourth time that I've read this maybe this is my favorite Sarah J Mass story that I read. I am a diehard Akatar fan. I I think I end up giving like five stars to all of these. Not that I because this is probably my like my least favorite of the series because it's just it gets so much bigger after this. But it the five stars it's mostly just because like I love this whole series as a whole and it's so nostalgic for me reading it again so um and this is YA um so there is like there's a little bit of steam but it's like very low low steam um there's trigger warnings for violence and murder in this um and this was also a um Beauty and the Beast retelling then I read Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is a sequel to her, I think it's It Happened One Summer book. Um, this is about Hannah, who is the sister of the heroine of the first book of the series. Um, and she is in, um, has a job as like, I believe an assistant in this like film production. And she kind of has a crush on like the director of this film and she is wanting to, um, learn more. She's wanting like her goal is to become like the person that makes like the soundtrack for like movies because she's really into music and it makes her like feel things when she listens to music. So that's what she really wants to do. And she, when she was visiting, like in the first book of the series, she ended up becoming friends with Fox, who is the hero of this story. Um, so she ends up there, she's working on this movie and they're needing to find a location. So she just suggests this town, which is in the Northwest, I believe. Um, to shoot this movie and so she's going there and she doesn't really have a place to stay so her and Fox end up becoming roommates um but he is kind of wanting a little bit more with her but at the same time he does, doesn't because he's also kind of known as a playboy um and he kind of feels like he that's like his persona so and he can't be in a relationship. Um, there are trigger warnings for toxic masculinity in this with Fox, not necessarily that he has those qualities. It's more so that people assume certain qualities. So like he is like very attractive looking. So all of his life, people have just told him that he's going to be a heartbreaker, um, that he's just tells him that he's not made for relationships because of how beautiful he is, um, which has been very hurtful for him. So there are elements, like I said, of that. Um, and I would say the steam on this is more like medium to high steam. Oh, and I rated this at three stars. I did not enjoy this one as much as the first one. I was pretty bored throughout most of this, which is pretty sad. I was, this is one of my like anticipated releases of the year and I found it to be pretty disappointing. Then I read My Maddie, which is the eighth book of the Hades Hanging series by Tilly Cole, which is so far the last book that has been released. I think Tilly Cole has plans to write more in this series because there's like a couple of characters that she's kind of set up for them to have their own story. But so far, this is all we have. Um, this is I, and I also believe that I think this was supposed to be like a novella because this is about Flame and Maddie, which they have already had their own book. But 
I guess this just she had so much to write maybe and it just got extended into being like a full-length novel um so like I said this is about Flame and Maddie and they are having to work through some issues that Flame is having because Maddie is now pregnant and this is very triggering for Flame especially because of his past trauma um where his like baby brother died and he just has a lot of trauma that he hasn't resolved from that he is afraid that he is going to end up hurting Maddie or she's going to end up dying in childbirth or once they have the baby that he if he touches the baby that he will cause the baby to die um, so he has a lot of things that he is working through in this book. Um, this book is also about Ash, who is um, Flame's little brother, who is like a prospect for the MC. And Ash is also kind of dealing with a lot of heavy things. He is really spiraling in this book um, because he is dealing with the death of his best friend which we saw I believe we saw in the prior book um so and he doesn't really know how to deal with this he is kind of being a dick and he is like pushing people away from him um he has some thoughts that he should have been the one to die instead of his friend um and he ends up starting to turn towards drugs um so there is trigger warnings for drug use in this um and yeah so both of them are dealing with some a lot of things and you just kind of have to see how everything turns out um there's you know other trigger warnings for past trauma and abuse um there is violence in this there is torture there is death in this um so this one is pretty dark the steam on this was actually probably i would say that's probably the lowest out of all the books of the series this is more le low to medium steam which i honestly didn't mind as much just because there are so much um trauma that these characters are going through this is more about this much more of a um like character kind of book not necessarily like a total like romance I guess um because these two characters like they're already kind of established they're just kind of working through their marriage and like I said working through his past trauma so there is more like like a character growth type story um but I am like anxiously awaiting getting another book in this series um there's viking who is another character that i'm pretty sure he is going to end up getting his own story which i'm pretty excited about and i believe ash sh i feel like ash should get his own story because his stuff kind of gets somewhat unresolved by the end of this story so i know he's got a lot more stuff that he needs to work through to get to where he i know that he can get and then the last book that I read for May is going to be Not My Type by Evie Mitchell. This is the first book in a series, I believe. Um, this is about our heroine Frankie, and she has her own podcast where she talks about um, sex and different kinks and inclusivity. Um, she is a disabled character she is in a wheelchair because she had I believe it was cervical like spinal cancer as a kid um that left her able to not walk and she has some to limited limited to no feeling like in her legs and she is wanting to get this like like some sort of award and they think that she might kind of get this award if she like does a story about like rope and like rigging which is like a kink where like you like tie people up and whatnot um so she hears about our hero of the story who is a rigger and she is wanting to find out more about this and she wants to kind of interview him and maybe have him on her podcast talking about this and he kind of agrees and he teaches like a class at this like 
I don't know if it's like a sex club or like a BDSM type club. Um, but he teaches a class about rigging and, you know, safety and consent and everything. And he asked to use her as like a, um, to help in like demonstration. And she's like totally on board with it. Um, but yeah, they end up filming like a romance. I really enjoyed this. I gave it four and a half stars. Um, I put, gave it four and a half stars because I'm wanting to just kind of sit on it for a while to kind of see how I feel if I want to bump it down to four or leave it where it's at or bump it up to five because initially finishing the story I really really enjoyed it so it just kind of depends on like memorability kind of factor and what I'm feeling down the road but like I said initially I really enjoyed this I loved the disability rep in this um I loved that our hero wasn't really like phased by her being in a wheelchair I also really loved the BDSM kink aspect to this um I feel like it's a really good intro into that if you're not really um, familiar with reading those types of things because like I said he teaches a class on it so there's really good discussions in here about um, consent um, he there's a lot of like check-ins that he does with her um, asking what is okay for him to do and what is not okay for him to do um, and they just kind of have this like set up beforehand before they get into like the scene and the steam on this was really high so yeah this does also contain like a third act kind of breakup to it um which i had said previously is a big big pet peeve of mine which it still is but this one i didn't really notice as a, notice it as much it wasn't as big of a thing mostly because it gets resolved fairly quickly at least i felt like it did so um but yeah so that's gonna be the last book that i read in may um i would really like to hear from you about some of the books that you've read in may and really enjoyed um make sure that you leave a thumbs up for me if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already and otherwise i will see you in the next one bye guys